When I woke up shortly after midnight, his warning came to my mind with a tint of danger that seemed in the stark darkness. Really to get up. For the purpose of having a look around. On the hill, a big fire burned, illuminating fitfully a crooked corner of the station house. One of the agents with a picket of a few dark blacks, armed for the purpose, was going to over the ivory. But deep within the forest, red gleams that wavered, that seemed to sink and rise from the ground amongst confused columnar shapes of intense blackness, showed the exact position of the camp where Mr. Kurtz's adorers were keeping their uneasy vigil. The monotonous beating of a big drum filled the air with muffled shocks and a lingering vibration. A steady droning sound of many men chanting each to himself some weird incantation came out from the black, flat wall of the woods as the humming of bees comes out of the hive. It had a strange narcotic effect upon my half of my senses. I believe I dozed off, leaning over the rail. An abrupt burst of yells, an overwhelming outbreak of a pent-up and mysterious frenzy with me in a bewildered wonder. It was cut short all at once, and the low droning went on with an effect of audible and soothing silence. I glanced casually into the little cabin. A light was burning within, but Mr. Kurtz was not there. I think I would have raised an outcry if I had believed my eyes, but I didn't believe them at first. The thing seemed so impossible. The fact is, I was completely unnerved by a sheer blank fright, pure abstract terror, unconnected with any distinct shape of physical danger. What made this emotion so overpowering was, how shall I define it? The moral shock I received, as if something altogether monstrous, intolerable, and unexpectedly. This lasted, of course, the merest fraction of a second. And then the usual sense of commonplace, deadly danger, the possibility of a sudden onslaught and massacre, or something of the kind which I saw impending, was positively welcome and composing. It pacified me, in fact, so much that I did not raise an alarm. There was an ancient boat that was sleeping on a chair on deck within three feet of him. The yells had not awakened him. He snored very soon and left him to his slumbers and left ashore. It was ordered I should never betray him. It was written I should be loyal to the nightmare of my choice. I was anxious to deal with this shadow by myself alone. To this day, I don't know why I was so jealous of sharing with anyone the peculiar blackness of that experience. As soon as I got on the bank, I saw a trail, a broad trail through the grass. I remember the exultation of which I said to myself, he can't walk, he is crawling on all fours, I've got him. The grass was wet with dew. I strode rapidly with clenched fists. I fancy I had some vague notion of falling upon him and giving him a drubbing. I don't know. I had some imbecile thoughts. But then it went with, it, with the cat intruded herself upon my memory. As a most improper person, sitting at the other end. Such a fear. 